Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September the 30th, 2021. Let's talk about the rematch. Champion Alexander Usyk against former champion Anthony Joshua. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in the rematch, a KO by both men is much more likely. Right? Let's think of it in the abstract. Let's say you normally drive 55 miles an hour. Right? I'm guessing many of you, <laughs> since you're boxing fans, drive a lot faster than that. But for purposes of this example, let's say you drive 55 miles an hour normally. Right? Then let's say you realize that to get to work on time you should be driving 75 miles an hour well understand a lot of people might start out going 75 miles an hour but then they're gonna feel uncomfortable and the reason why they're gonna feel uncomfortable will just assume that there are no speed limits the reason why they're going to feel uncomfortable is because there's more danger involved. There's more risk involved in driving faster. Right? Your timing's completely different. Before you're leisurely going at 55 miles an hour, you see the street sign out yonder, you know what to expect. You've driven that road many times. Now at 75 miles an hour, you're wondering if you have enough time to break if a pedestrian starts crossing the street. Right? At 75 miles an hour, you're starting to get anxious because the pacing is different. Right? Before it took you about 10 minutes to get to this exit on the highway. Now it's taking you shorter. And that's throwing you off. Well, understand, Anthony Joshua is who he is. This isn't a unilateral situation. It's not like Anthony Joshua can unilaterally decide, oh, I'm just going to be much more aggressive in the ring. I'm going to be a lead puncher, not a counter puncher. I'm going to impose myself on this little man without understanding that just that decision alone is going to, number one, completely change his stamina, right? His demands on his own body. Number two, guess what? Before, when you were cautious, you had your defense up waiting to counter. Now suddenly you're aggressive. Now suddenly you're throwing punches. You're leaving yourself open. And you're in with a sniper. A guy who is accurate. A guy who doesn't waste a lot of punches. A guy who knows how to counter you. So I want people to understand that if Anthony Joshua comes out and decides he's going to channel his inner Derek Chisora, and by the way, as we predicted here, that Chisora fight was a tougher fight for Usyk than Joshua. Let's say Joshua decides he's going to channel Derek Chisora, right? I understand they are now part of the same boxing team, right? Well, understand, Derek Chisora who himself is bone tired in the second half of fights has built up that style over several fights Chisora knows how to make it messy he knows how to smother an opponent he's prepared to go all in Anthony Joshua is not gonna learn that mindset folks in a few short months they're talking about the rematch for early next year. You know, Anthony Joshua is still going to be Anthony Joshua early next year. He's a cautious giant. Against a guy like Usyk, there's danger if you decide you're just going to try to bum rush him. Not only that, the secret's out now. The first time, we didn't know what to expect. Well, now we know. Joshua can't fight that fight and expect to win. He lost the fight by several rounds. So this time I'm guessing Usyk's going to look across the ring at Joshua before the first round starts and he's going to think to himself, well, what's going to be different this time? 
I'm guessing there's a possibility that Josh was going to try to run over and throw big shots on me. Folks, he's going to be prepared. There isn't going to be an element of surprise. Now let's talk about something that others aren't. Because for me, it's really important. The 12th round of the first fight. Folks, that's scary. That's bonafidely scary. Am I the only one who thought that a challenger had enough gas left in the tank where he decided, okay, I'm going to let two minutes and 20 seconds pass. Then I'm going to step deep in the pocket against this guy because he can't stop me. Then I'm going to start cuffing him around. I'm going to go for the knockdown. I'm going to go for the exclamation point. I'm going to bully this guy over to the side of the ring. Have him leaning on the ropes. And I'm going to rain him with some big time shots. Folks, that's what people need to think about. Right? I'm here in the world talking about how Anthony Joshua just needs to step on the gas a little bit more. He just needs to be aggressive and stuff like that. After getting battered in the 12th round, isn't that the most recent round these guys have been in the ring? After being battered in that 12th round, isn't that going to carry over to this next fight? Let's say Joshua tries to make it rough and tumble. Let's say Joshua doesn't want a pocket to form and wants to just crash whatever exists and rough up Usyk. Why is it that no one thinks that Usyk isn't firmly convinced that if he puts his mind to it, he can stop Joshua? Revisit that first fight. I don't know, as I sit here today, whether rounds five through eight were legit. What do I mean by that? I mean, Usyk comes out and wins at least three of the first four rounds. Right? At least three of the first four rounds. Suddenly, we get to the middle rounds. Now, we've all seen boxing matches where a fighter is waiting out his opponent. A fighter wants his opponent to have some success because the fighter wants to convince that opponent to keep fighting that same way. We get to the middle rounds. Those are Joshua's best rounds of the fight. The question for me is whether Usyk let them happen. Right? Understand, Usyk could have decided, okay, I know how to handle this guy when we have a pocket, when he's cautious. This guy thinks he's going to outbox me with far less head movement than I have. With far less foot speed than I have. Right, so Usyk could have thought to himself, I have at least a two-round lead. Right, even factoring in the politics. He could have thought to himself, you know what, this big guy has gotten tired in some fights. This fight has gone the way I want it to go so far. I know if I want, I can step deep in the pocket and have the kind of exchange that I had at the end of the 12th round. I'm not sure, folks, if the middle rounds that Anthony Joshua won weren't rounds that A, Usyk took off, B, Usyk decided to experiment and found himself getting hit with some shots. Anthony Joshua right uppercut to Usyk's body. Right? And then was kind of patient in not overextending himself in the middle part of the fight. So, as I see it, Joshua can't just jump in the pocket and try to empty the gun on Usyk early. Because Joshua himself has to have doubts. Folks, the last round, we'll call it the last 40 seconds, 
right? After Usyk opens up both hands and Joshua showed an inability to clinch him and to stop him. And after Joshua got over by the ropes and is literally leaning on the middle rope. Folks, the ropes are keeping him up. And after Joshua, and I want you to see Joshua's position when he's doing so. He's not in position to throw punches back. I believe the only thing that kept Joshua up at that moment was Usyk. I believe Usyk understood, I've won this fight. They can't rob me. They can't rob me. I've won the fight by at least four rounds. They can't rob me. I don't need to drop this guy. Right? Quick final bell. But more importantly, folks, Joshua is defenseless at the end of the fight. Defenseless. Now, that was in a measured fight. Where Joshua didn't go for the KO early, like some people hope he does, in the rematch. Right? That's a measured fight. Do you think we even get to that point if Joshua goes for the KO early in the rematch? Maybe he gets it. But understand, if he doesn't get it, do you think the Joshua who ends the first fight, who comes in, light, looks like he's trained awfully hard, he's in shape, doesn't have a gut, you see his six-pack at the weigh-in, you think that the Joshua who ends the first fight sitting on the rope could exert himself more in the early rounds of a rematch and make it to the ending of the fight? I don't. Let me also talk about two expectations. You know, before the first fight, oh, Josh was a big favorite. Right? You were getting long odds, better than two to one odds on Usyk. We thought, hey, Usyk's a visitor to the division. Right, folks, understand. The second fight's going to have a completely different set of assumptions. Right? I don't think Usyk's the underdog in the rematch. When I see a guy who's unemotionally taking apart his opponent, who lets his opponent stay upright in the last round after battering him with both hands, a guy who puffs up his opponent's eye and then is moving toward his right hand, unafraid of the right hand coming back. A guy who has Joshua figured out to the point where, folks, look at the first round. Usyk has his left hand pinned to his face. He's guarding against uh, uh, Joshua's right. The only hand he throws for most of the round, and he's a southpaw, is his right hand. Right? He comes in prepared for Joshua's right hand. Right? He comes in expecting Joshua to try to do something early. Later in the fight, he's not even worried about the right hand. He's circling toward it. Right? We know Usyk's not going to be intimidated by Joshua. We know Usyk knows the angles. We know Joshua's more of a stationary target than Usyk is. So if both guys know the angles, understand Usyk moves his head. It's going to be harder for Joshua. It's going to be easier for Usyk because Joshua doesn't move his head. Usyk knows where to find him. Right, so, I have no reason to believe that Joshua wins the rematch. If I had to pick a side, I would say, oh, Usyk. Because I believe the bet's going to be hedgeable. In other words, I'm expecting Usyk to be a slight favorite. I could be wrong. Right? Lord knows there's a narrative out there that Joshua just fought the wrong fight. Not that he was in against a superior talent. Right? Keep in mind, my basic premise is that boxing's an art. 
that you could be the superior athlete but lose to the superior craftsman. I have no doubt in my mind, looking at these guys' careers, that Usyk is the better craftsman. Right, so the way I'm playing it is, okay, I'll take Joshua by KO. Right, we'll, you know, pick the one way I think Joshua has a shot to win the fight. This is the heavyweight division. You know, guys have big punches. One big punch at the right time could get a guy a KO. Okay. And I'm going to hedge to play with. Depending on the odds, either Usyk to win, because I think he successfully defends his title, or, depending on the odds, if they make Usyk too much of a favorite, because I want a rate of return, I'm going to take Usyk, Usyk by stoppage. Because this is a rematch. Because Usyk knows the angles. Because Usyk knows he can hurt Joshua. Because he was cuffing him around in the last round of the fight. Understand, too, the risk involved with Joshua diving in the pocket. Let's say Joshua decides he's George Foreman. And he's going to try to push Usyk around and he's going to jump in the pocket. One of the secrets to George Foreman was he had a chin on him. Right? By the way, even that chin gets dented by Ron Lyle. Right? We won't count the Jimmy Young fight because that's exhaustion. Right? But Ron, but George Foreman gets dropped by Ron Lyle. Right? Well, understand, George Foreman's chin was granite compared to Anthony Joshua's chin. Right? Joshua's going to have to find a way to be much more aggressive while also thinking enough about defense to not get hit flush. Right, folks? There are times where Joshua gets hit and he pauses. Right? This fight is worse than the Andy Ruiz fight because in the Andy Ruiz fight, Joshua drops Ruiz first. Then it's when Ruiz gets off the canvas and Joshua opens up a bit too much that Joshua then gets caught and dropped. Right? Here it's worse than that, right? Here you have a guy who hasn't been dropped. That's Usyk. And he's just methodically fighting Joshua at his own pace. Right? The most revealing round to me is that round 12. In the comment section of this video, you interpret what happens the last 40 seconds. Number one, didn't Joshua get a break in the last few seconds of the round? Right? The bell sounds a little early. But number two, wasn't Joshua getting hit by both of Usyk's hands? Wasn't he defenseless? standing up in a fight that Usyk had already won. Doesn't Usyk let him off the hook? In other words, Usyk has him up against the ropes. The big man is the one who's by the ropes. Usyk batters him, then they look at each other. Didn't you get the feeling that Usyk thought to himself, I've won this title. I don't need to knock this man down. I've already made a statement. If you're Anthony Joshua and you recall that 12th round, you know you were getting battered. You know you were hurt. Let's remember Joshua in his corner, folks, right after that sequence. Folks, he's hurt in his corner. Right? He's tired. He's bent over. He looks like he's grimacing to me. If you're Joshua and you remember that sequence and you come out for the rematch and Usyk's prepared for you to be hyper-aggressive and you try to be hyper-aggressive and then you start getting hit with some very educated straight left hands back. You start to get stunned. Your defense falls apart. We know how Joshua is when he gets stunned, don't we? We saw it in the Andy Ruiz fight practically defenseless. We saw it in this Usyk fight. 
right? Joshua is not the guy who gets stunned and then finds a way to wrap up an opponent. Right? That's not who he is. Right? Joshua gets stunned. Look at the closing seconds of this fight, the 12th round. Joshua gets stunned. Folks, he's all dressed up with nowhere to go. You don't think Usyk knows that? So let's say you're Joshua. And instead of the first round against Usyk, you find yourself in the 13th round against Usyk. You've bum-rushed Usyk. Usyk is diligent in looking at that straight right hand. Right? Usyk somehow went through this entire fight without getting hit once with a good Joshua left hook. And I consider the left hook Joshua's best punch. Right? So let's say the rematch happens and Joshua comes across the ring, comes after Usyk. And Usyk's ready for him. Right? Usyk's moving around. Joshua can't slow him down because Joshua doesn't have experience playing the bully. Right? Joshua's not Foreman. Joshua's not Sonny Liston. Right? Let's say Joshua comes over and he tries to be Derek Chisor and he runs up to Usyk and stuff like that and Usyk is able to slip out of the way. Understand, Usyk never hurt Derek Chisora the way he hurt Anthony Joshua. If there's one guy out of the two who Usyk, I'm sure, is aware he can stop, it's Joshua. So I do believe Usyk wins the rematch. I'll hedge the play with Joshua by KO because I believe at this point it's all or nothing for Joshua. Let me just say, I understand from a boxing perspective. If I were Joshua's brother and we were just talking about whether this was good for his career from a boxing sense, whether he's going to be ready to actually win the rematch, I would tell him, bro, don't do it. This guy's too dangerous. Right? You're better off staying in the weeds. Having Usyk then fight the winner of Wilder Fury. And then stepping out and saying, hey, I want the winner of that match. Right? After taking some time off to work on your game to clear your head. But we know that's not what's happening here. Right? We understand boxing is a business. The money matters. The promoter understands. The rematch will net big dollars. Right? Joshua made a lot more on the Andy Ruiz rematch than he did the first fight. So we understand that Joshua's in the ring because, quite frankly, he can't get that money anywhere else. He's still in the public consciousness. So Joshua, in part for financial reasons and also, if he gets lucky in that fight, then he gets the huge payday against whoever wins Wilder Fury. Joshua has taken the rematch. I don't think it's going to work out well for him. We'll all find out together, but the way we'll structure the bet, and I want people to figure this out, is part of the betting portfolio, even though I firmly believe Usyk wins. In fact, I think Usyk by KO is probably the most likely outcome. Right? But in my betting portfolio, I'm going to have Joshua by stoppage. If Joshua gets the stoppage after the fight, the Joshua fan club can get online and say, Dwyer, you suck. You bet against our guy again. Okay, fine. Right, I'll be the guy who sucks, who's in line collecting with the winning betting ticket. Okay, just understand, I don't believe Joshua can outbox Alexander Usyk. I've seen them for 12 rounds. I don't think Joshua can outbox Usyk no matter what he does. His only chance of winning the fight is by stoppage. And let's just say Usyk's strongest part of the first fight, as good as the first four rounds were, were the last four rounds. 
Joshua is lucky he stayed on his feet in that 12th round. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me close too by saying I saw where a member of Fury's family, I believe it's Peter Fury, criticized Joshua's corner. I think fans make a mistake thinking that the communication between corners and fighters is perfect. Right? We've all seen many fights where the corner is yelling one thing and the fighter is doing the other thing. Right? What I think I know is I've watched enough Anthony Joshua to know that Joshua sees himself as a student of the game. Right? Joshua believed, in my opinion, that he was going to outbox Alexander Usyk. The problem is Joshua has such punching power that there are certain parts of his game that are underdeveloped. So all you have to do, just kill the volume, look at him with Usyk, is look at the upper body movement. Right? You don't know where Usyk's upper body is going to be early in the fight, right? Usyk's moving around. You don't know which way Usyk's going. That's a skill Usyk has cultivated. Joshua hasn't had to. You saw Joshua's body. You knew where Joshua was in the ring at all times. Also, I get the feeling, in fact, I've seen Usyk hurt in fights before. Right? The Derek Chisora fight. Where Usyk knows how to clinch. Right, you get hit, you get stung. Fighters who aren't blessed punchers, whose fights actually have to go a few rounds, right, actually think about what to do when they're hurt. I want you to look at Joshua's hands in the last round. Usyk steps on the gas. Usyk starts emptying the tank. Right, folks, I'm just telling you, Joshua couldn't clinch. Joshua's just getting battered. Just like he got battered by Andy Ruiz. Right? If you stun Joshua and you continue the combination and you move a little bit, Joshua's helpless. Right? So, let me just say, Joshua's last few fights, he loses to Andy Ruiz. In the rematch, he decides that he's going to move away from Andy Ruiz. Something he can't do against Usyk. Because Usyk has the superior foot speed. Right? If Joshua moves back, Usyk's going to move with him. I think we all know. After watching the first fight, Joshua cannot beat Usyk on his back foot. Right? He can't. He has to be on his front foot. Right? And so understand... After that fight, Joshua fights Kubrat Pulev. Right now, all I could say is Pulev is blown out in the third round. He's blown out in the third round. Folks, it takes a cautious fighter to have Pulev then come back in the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round, the seventh round, the eighth round. Folks, I just don't see any way that happens against George Foreman, against Joe Fraser. Let me also say, too, that there have been some heavyweight champions who have fought some hellacious punchers from the lower ranks. Right? Rocky Marciano against Archie Moore. Now let's remember that fight. It's a firefight. Moore drops Marciano. Right? Marciano hits the canvas. Marciano's knocked down by Archie Moore. When Marciano gets off the canvas, just understand the mindset. Marciano's not trying to win a decision, folks. I believe he then proceeds to drop Archie Moore three or four times. 
right? Archie Moore, after that fight, considered Marciano to be a great fighter. I want people to look at Joe Fraser against Hall of Famer, one of the hardest punchers in boxing history. Uh, oh, man. Mid-video, I'm forgetting the guy's name. Bob Foster, right? You're going to notice that against Bob Foster, Joe Fraser, who viewed himself as the bigger man, but who was small by heavyweight standards, comes after Bob Foster, right? Joe Fraser was not interested in winning a decision. He's fighting a smaller man. He comes after him, right, folks? Anthony Joshua has Kubrat Pulev knocked down, dazed, and confused in the third round. If he's not the kind of guy to come after Kubrat Pulev in the fourth, fifth, and sixth round, this is with a clear advantage. This is with age on his side. Do you believe even if he knocks down Usyk, which I think is highly unlikely, but if he knocks down Usyk, do you feel that he has the follow through to actually end the fight early? I don't. I consider Anthony Joshua, and Joshua has talent, don't get me wrong. <coughs> he's one of the best punchers I've ever seen. But he's a big counter puncher. He's the big counter. That's who he is. Right? So then, of course, we get to Joshua Usyk. My point is simply, Anthony Joshua hasn't looked like an unbeatable Goliath for some time. Okay, I believe the fans are remembering great Joshua Chaos, the Brazil fight, for example, that were a few fights ago. Right? If he hasn't been stepping on the gas to close out fights early in any of the last four fights he's had, Two against Andy Ruiz, one against Pulev, this one against Usyk. How is he going to do that in the Usyk rematch against a fighter who was undisputed at Cruiser and who has already beaten him on British soil by multiple rounds, according to each of the judges? Ponder that thought. I expect. Usyk to win the rematch. I believe the most likely outcome is Usyk by stoppage. I'm going to hedge the play depending on the odds. For conservatives, Usyk simply to win hedged with Joshua by KO. For risk takers, Usyk by stoppage. Hedged with Joshua by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.